Hi, this is Kevin from Let Me Tech You. And in this video, what I want to do is go over how you can kind of make an easily uh, repeatable um, template to be able to deploy across different regions. And when I say that, if you watch my previous video, um, I kind of went through a kind of nice way to structure your Terraform in a way that's easier to be um, repeatable across different environments or regions or projects. And, and that's all done with the help of some scripting and uh, the way that it's kind of laid out so that you're only using TFRs files, as you can see here to deploy resources versus having to build out, you know, either modules or different things every single time you have a new region or project that you're uh, starting up. So if you haven't seen that, check the con or the description down below. I have the link to that video, but like and subscribe if you can, because I'll be doing a lot more videos around some Terraform best practices. So to get into this, um, what we want to do is, if you think of a landing zone, and I like to call this landing zone because you want to think when you go into a new region, you want to ask yourself, what does it take to get this set up? You know, whether it's, uh, you know, your resource groups, your VNets, any subnets that you need, um, any particular type of VMs, um, anything that you think would be needed to at least get your team up and running, any type of VNet peerings, um, virtual network gateways, firewalls, all the things that kind of get a, a company up and running in the event of a DR uh, uh, scenario or just, you know, moving into a new region due to growth. So what I like to do is in this um, folder here, I've got a scripts folder, but it can be anything. I'm just going to create a new folder called template. And in this deployment, I'm basically taking, um, so I'm going to take this development one. There's this production one. There's nothing in there. Let me actually get rid of that. So what I want to do, and actually let's add that back in. That's probably why I put it in there is to keep it from going up there. Okay, so I have, I have these two folders here. And if you watch the last video or the previous video that I had it there in the comments, you'll see that I had two video or two folders to kind of help with um, project level separation. Now, could be that you have all your TFRs under one particular environment, so, so development. But the biggest thing what I want to say is your, your, your key structure is what's going to make this template a lot easier to kind of um, uh, to do. So I'm going to take a copy of this region and I'm going to go down here in the template. I'm going to paste that down in there. And we're going to name this region. And instead of central US, we're just going to call this environment. So I'm going to make all my keys the, uh, well, actually not environment, but region region name, right? So region underscore region name. Then development, what I'm gonna do is have this just stay as development, home lab, network TFR. So I, I like to kind of um, have my key structured a way in which that they kind of reference the environment that they're going into. And, and the reason for that is it, it can kind of, it can kind of be one or two ways. You might want to have it to where you don't put any region um, namings in there. But if you if you do it always like that, then you don't have to worry about, well, if someone created a key that had the region name in there on accident or, or on purpose, then you won't have a mixed match of, you know, oh, some people did it with key or with the region name. Some people didn't. So you might want to do like a home lab virtual network or let's call this VNet for short. And then central US 01. So in my template, instead of this being central US, I might have a key that says E and V. And I'll show you the reason behind that here in a second. So enabled equals false. Uh, now location here, we're gonna go again. E and V and that's good there. Now this address space, obviously when you're going to a new environment, these are some of the things you might have uh, already a pre, pre uh, um, 
predetermined. So you might actually go in and fix these afterwards, but I'm not gonna worry about that now here. So here's another one, Home Lab. Let's go here and fix this. ENV RG01. ENV. Or region, actually. Fix that on these ones. All right, so same thing there. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the fix this. Let's change this to VNet underscore region. Let's go ahead and copy this so we don't have to type it each time here. Region there, region there, region there. Now it's a little bit of upfront work, but in the end of things, it makes things a lot easier once we go to deploy this. So now using a tool like Azure uh, or Visual Studio Code, now you might have some particular type of uh, legend because you might have other particular um, things that you might want to had pre-staged ahead of time. So let's say we had like tags, for example. And, you know, name or environment equals pro, you know, development. Well, instead of putting development, we will put, you know, ENV. So then, you know, we'd go through and find all the ones that say ENV and change that. But the great thing about this is how this is gonna be done using Azure uh, or Visual Studio Code it makes it a lot easier. So now what I could do is I could copy this entire folder. Actually, let's go ahead and save, make sure all these are saved. Save, save, save and save. And so I'm gonna take this entire folder, copy it, and now we're going into another regions here, right? Paste that in there. Region name, we're gonna change that real quick to be, let's say uh, Ireland or what, or UK, whatever, UK. So we're in the UK. So now I wanna go in and find all the ones that say region. So I can easily now say, you know what? Find and folder, give me everything that is our region and change it to UK, replace all. That easy. Now, if I go into my region UK and look at all my different UK, UK, or, you know, it would probably be UK South or whatever, but whatever. You get the idea. So UK, UK. So all those got changed. UK, UK, and then environment. So now let's say we had a bunch of environment ones as well. So we go and find and folder. We look for everything that has environment. And we would go, say, development. Oop, not there development one occurrence that gets changed and obviously we could have put our double quotes there but just trying to show an example so really now uh now you don't have to do that for every now this could be you know we could have a production so you may not want to do it at the top level to say everything e and v is product or development because production would be production so at this level you would do a different find and folder you will look for anything with the word E and V or whatever and make your changes. So that makes it to where you can easily have a template that can now, if we wanna to go to another region, we take this same template, we deploy it to another region, and that gets us off the ground running. And the great thing about it is if we're using this folder structure in the way it's supposed to, that it makes the de uh, deployment of a lot of those different resources easily repeatable across different regions or um, environments. So if you have any questions on how that works or, you know, um, you know, in, in testing it, 
drop me a comment down below. Um, again, if you haven't seen the last video, check that out because that'll give you more insights into why uh, my folder structure is this way and how this can help you in your journey and you know, uh, working within the team of people who may not want to actually deploy um, or build all the different modules or resources that's going to be, you know, deployed for different disk or resource groups, firewalls, storage accounts, all that. You do it once, you use TFRs to define these, and you easily just keep making your deployments a lot faster instead of having to reiterate the process every time you need a new storage account and stuff like that. So again, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, drop me a comment down below. Like and subscribe and check out some of the other videos that I have. Again, thanks for tuning in and hope to see you next time.